where does any transaction you've ever closed come from? It always starts with a conversation. Agent Power Huddle is a daily jumpstart, giving you all the tools you need to create an amazing real estate career. Led by top experts in the field, you'll learn how to sell more houses in less time while creating the life you want. Welcome to the Agent Power Huddle. All business is conversation. That's going to be what we're, uh, what we're talking about this morning. Happy holidays to everyone and anyone who celebrates Christmas. Merry Christmas to you guys. It is the Tuesday after Christmas, and I'm amazed we have anyone on here live. So Heather, Merry Christmas. Mike, Merry Christmas. Diana, Merry Christmas. Greg, Autumn, Gian, good to see you guys. I'm, I'm thrilled you're here. This is the week where not only have, like realtors have been off work for like a month, but like the whole rest of the world is off work this week. So those of you who are working, my guess is if you're here, or even if you're listening to this later, um, the fact that you're here shows me you're pretty committed to your career. But also this topic today where we say all business is conversation is a perfect topic for right now. So let me break this down. And this is not my own concept, this all business is conversation, but I heard it a few weeks ago, or actually probably a month ago on a training. And uh, it really struck me like he's, he's spot on, right? No matter where your leads come from, let's put it in the context of working with buyers and sellers. We can talk a bit in terms of uh, of recruitment, agent attraction, we can talk it in terms of any sales, but, but let's do specifically for today, let's let's talk buyers and sellers, right? Where does any transaction you've ever closed come from? It always starts with a conversation, right? It's gotta come from somewhere. And so whether that is an inbound lead, like you paid money to generate a lead through pay-per-click, a Facebook ad, whether you paid money to realtor.com or Zillow, right? And that was an inbound lead, you still have to reach out to that person via text, DM, or phone call and start a conversation, right? Whether you're at an open house, you were face-to-face -face with someone that started with a conversation. You were talking to someone you already knew in your sphere of influence and you're talking to them like, oh yeah, my cousin needs to buy or sell a house or my friend from work, right? It, it always comes through conversation. And so I want to really, as we go into 2024, break this down to the simplest possible steps that any agent could jump into, whether you're brand new or very experienced. Um, I want to give you some tools that you could do, and we're probably going to do this a little shorter. This is normally a 30-minute podcast. My goal is to keep it shorter, and if you have 30 minutes blocked off, right, you actually put into action some of what we talked about today, right? I'm not going to sit here and babysit you because I can't, especially if you're listening to the recorded version. It's very hard for me to come through your speakers like, Heather, who's on camera? Diana, wave your hands, guys, right? If you're on camera, those guys are on camera. I, I could sit here and, and force them to do this thing, right, because there's I can see their face, and they would be very awkward if they're like, I'm not going to do it, but like, this is the recording. This is, this is, this is a, a choose-your-own-adventure. So let's talk conversations. Um, number one, you want to start with making a list of people you'd like to have conversations with. If you already have a CRM with leads in it, fantastic. You've already got your list. It's made for you, right? Maybe it's even, maybe you've got too many names in there. Maybe it's thousands of names if you've been in real estate for a while and you want to whittle it down. Maybe we're talking about your sphere of influence, your past clients. Maybe it's a certain amount of buyers and sellers you've been following up with, but what we're going to do today, we're going to talk about a conversation blitz, which is a short period of time. Typically, I would say start with 15 minutes. If you're if you're feeling like you have more focus, you can even do it for an hour. But in 15 minutes, I want to show you the power of what you can do and what you can start in just a 15 minute chunk here or there. Because no matter how busy you are, even if it's just some of its mental busyness, even during the holidays, even right now, right? So I'm saying I'm choosing this one today because everyone's out running around and they were shopping last week. This week they're returning things. I don't know what's going on, right? They're going to holiday parties. You find yourself with 15 minute blocks of your day, almost daily, multiple times a day. You're waiting for someone, you're standing in line, you get somewhere early, you get some, do you guys agree with that? Raise your hand if you're like, yep, I, I can find like so little 15 minute blocks. And so when you start to realize the power of intentional focus, intentional focus, as well as what you can get done in just a short period of time, when it comes to starting conversations, you'll see what you can do. Um, I, I believe it was Carnegie. Uh, you guys know, know Andrew Carnegie. Well, I think he was credited with this quote, which says you know, he made you know, huge amounts of fortune, it's huge wealth. And he credits his success to one simple thing, which is the ability to focus for five minutes on any given task. Isn't that wild? Like, that's it. Like he said, that's all I do is like, if I just have ability to block everything else out and focus for five minutes. So I'm not, I'm saying 15 minutes, right? So if Carnegie could, could create huge wealth out of five minutes, imagine if you could do this focus for 15 minutes. So when I say starting conversations, it could be as simple as reaching out and saying, hello. Like literally, it's just, you know, someone sending a text, hello, how are you? Um, I've got a list over here I'm looking at, by the way. 
uh, right here on my phone, I made a little list of things. We have what's new, what's happening, how are the kids, right? I thought of you. How was your how was your how was your holidays, right? Do you have any plans for the rest for the New Year's? How's work? How's life? If you know them and you haven't talked to them in a while, it could be something as generic and short as that to, to open up a conversation. Now I'll tell you the dangers of something really general and broad in a minute. But let's say you actually know them. There's someone from your world that would be genuinely happy to get a text message from you. Even if you haven't talked to them in a year, it's almost like that conversation never stopped. You're picking it right back up again. Any of you guys ever get random messages from someone you knew in the past and you get it and you're like, oh, cool. I'm happy to answer that. Right? You guys know those sort of people? That's where a specific or a general text message works really well. Now, if you have a buyer lead that's been in your database for a year, you've kind of off and on looked at houses, not, not, not even looked, maybe not even met them in person, maybe just kind of texted about houses before and you shoot them a, a generic like, hey, do you have plans for the holidays, right? Out of nowhere, it's going to be a little weird. Agreed, right? Or even worse, if you're just like, hey, how's life? They're like, I'm not, one, I don't, I'm not compelled to answer that at all. Number two, I know you're going, I know you're going somewhere with this. So like, you want to put this in context. If there's someone that you don't know as well, I would find that being more specific with your, um, with your questions works a lot better. So if there's a buyer who's been in there for a while, maybe you got connected on social media at some point. If you haven't connected on social media with all of your buyer and seller leads, by the way, highly recommend you do that as as part of your initial process when you're first f- first get a lead. Hey, thanks for your request. Or met someone at open house. Great. Hey, do you mind if I follow you? Or even just sending them a friend request, right? Some people will accept, some people won't. But the reason you'd want to follow them on social media is because you can start to get to know what's going on in their life. So that way, when you go to, fo- to start a conversation, this isn't even follow up. Now we're just talking about starting conversations. You could glance at their social media, see that they were on a trip two months ago. Could be three months ago. How many of you guys have taken a trip? I'm taking a poll. The people on camera, by the way, I'm just going to keep playing with you guys. Between uh, the two people on camera this morning, how many of you guys have ever been on a trip ever in your life? Raise your hand. Cool. Have you ever been on a trip in the last year? Something the last, last year. Okay. Not, not recent, but like in the last year you've been on a trip. Cool. Don't have to tell me what it is. Just think of it in your mind. If someone were to ask you a specific question about that trip, even though it was like eight months ago, wouldn't you still be excited to talk about it? I just saw smiles from both of them, by the way. So, so look, everyone listening to this, the same thing. So if you ask a specific question, now you're no longer just this random person out of nowhere, but you're like, hey, I remember, didn't I see you went to Thailand a, a while back or this year? How was that? Oh, let me tell you. Okay, it was incredible, right? And now you're, and now you're into a conversation. The idea about starting conversations is then it's a lot easier to carry the momentum and kick it back and forth. You don't have to go back and forth 17 times in a day. Maybe you go back and forth once or twice, you give it some air, you let it breathe, you come back again. You give it, go back and forth a couple more times. You let it breathe. Does that make sense, guys? And then when appropriate, depending on the context, you will pivot it back to whatever the business is you want to talk about it. But you're you're warming up your list now because December 26th may not be the time that you want to start shopping for houses. But if you're listening to this podcast or you're here live today, you're like, but I'm working. But like, and and you could go looking for the people out there that are that are wanting to shop now because they're they are out there. I guarantee it. But if you come with the approach of like, I'm only gonna find the people that want to shop today. It's a lot harder than like, I'm just going to spend 15 minutes and start as many conversations as I can in 15 minutes, right? I spend, an, if I do that four times over, over the next couple of days, because I'm four 15 minute blocks, you've now spent a full hour just starting conversations and you can spend the next two weeks just kicking these conversations back and forth, making it much easier than a pivot back. Hey, I was just thinking about you, right? It, it, it was keep popping since we've been talking. It's been popped, it popped into my head. Like, I know you were thinking of moving a while back, like, and we kind of put it to the side. Are you... Are you ever like, is that still on the radar? Do you guys ever talk about it? But it becomes much more natural to pivot back to a business conversation. Does that make sense, guys? Looking for heads nodding. Okay, cool. So so that that's that's really the basic concept there. Um, the other thing I want to give to you is you're looking for ways that you can help them, right? As, as if we talk, dive into all business as a conversation, if you want to take it out of the world being really general and specific, you can send them a general like, hello, or a thumbs up and just see who responds back. Like go take a hundred leads in your database and shoot them like a thumbs up. I'm not recommending you do this as, as a thought experiment, but heck, maybe you do it. Maybe, who knows? See who responds, see who doesn't, right? It's just the ones who respond, those are the ones you're going to play with. But now we're looking for ways to help them and we're looking for ways to build value. So write down this list because this is where you're going to go as you continue these conversations. I want you to take notes on this and these are the things you're going to do. You're going to build value, right? Maybe it's related to the buying and selling of homes. Maybe it's unrelated because you know something about them. You know they're into dogs and you saw this cool article about dogs or this funny meme or this gif or whatever that's like, and building value doesn't have to look like actually like monetary value. It could be anything that builds value or the second thing would be building connection. Build value, 
and build connection. I have a few people in my life that send me funny, like, uh, animated gifts. Do you guys ever get to have anybody who like, I love talking in the language of animated gifts and it's hilarious. And that, but I don't do it. I forget to do it sometimes. Like I, it may, cracks me up and I forget to do it. But when I get them, I love them. Those of you watching, if you want to connect with me, by the way, send me a funny, funny gift. I, I, I love them. But like, I'll have one friend that we actually go back and forth. I mean, maybe you know the guy, his, his name is Tristan Almada, who, who started Lab Code Agents. Right? Do you guys know Lab Code Agents? It's a group has got like 160,000 agents in it. Anyway, Tristan and I will go back and forth and a couple of the people sometimes in a group and we will only speak in animated GIFs for like, I don't know, six back and forth of the conversation. Just like related, like no words, just GIFs. But that's building connection. And it doesn't have to be in real time. It's not like it shows up and you respond back immediately. That's the beauty of doing this via text or DM versus a phone call. Because a lot of people, I love the phone. I've always loved the phone. I will pick it up. I will call anyone. I don't, I don't sometimes I still get nervous, but I, but I love it because it's such a highly, like it's a fast tool for conversation. I really resisted text messaging at first because it was so slow. I'm impatient. It takes an hour or a day or a week to do something we could do in one phone call. But I can't fight against human nature. I can't fight against where our society is gone. And so I'm just embracing the fact that like, hey, the upside of text messaging is I could have a hundred conversations going at once and I could drag them out over the course of a couple of days and I could keep tossing them back and forth because it doesn't need to happen in real time. When you have a client like I have right now, I have a client that's a luxury. So I still, by the way, do sell houses, guys. Um, I, I have a luxury client looking for in San Diego, not ultra, but you know, decent luxury, about two to three million dollars um, condo in San Diego. And uh, her and her husband are both doctors, so very successful professional people. This is a second home they're looking for. It came as a referral from another client. I probably followed up with this person, I don't know, five, six, seven times before they even responded to me. That the agent who preferred to say, "That's just normal. Just keep, just keep following up. Just keep following up." Right? I'm like, "Okay, cool, no problem." And when she did respond, very friendly, we had a great conversation. And then I, I text with her. When I get a response for a text message, I know I do want to respond quickly because it's not that she's ignoring me. She's told me only look at my phone certain times during the day because otherwise I'm with patients. I'm in my office. Like I'm not looking. So if I want the conversation to continue quickly, those certain people you notice when they do respond, you do want to toss the ball back. Picture it like a tennis match. You hit it over, you hit it back. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you wait days. Some people you're going to hit it back quickly, leave it on their side. They'll hit it back to you when they're ready. Side note, please don't judge anyone else for the speed or slowness at which they respond to you. Right? Write this down if you're taking notes. This is a really key point. If you judge someone else, that anger, aggression, that judgment will get in the way of building the connection. Right? Some of you are super type A. I will not name names. But I could name all of your names. No, I'm kidding, actually. But but like you guys know if you're type A, and you, when someone if you have an unread text message, it, it like itches you and you and you're like dying. Like if you read it, you're like, I have to respond. If you're in the middle of whatever else, you think like you're dying to respond, right? Anyone anyone acknowledge being like that? Okay. If your clients are not like that, that's okay. But if we judge them, we're like, why are they not responding? Especially if we start getting frustrated. But sometimes we reach out to other agents who don't respond to us, right? We have an offer, we want to we have a question for one to write an offer to property. We're like, oh, I hate these other agents. Maybe they're busy doing whatever else to do. And like, I, I'm guilty of this. I get frustrated. I get it. But that frustration does nothing to build the connection. Does that make sense? And so I always take it on myself to be pleasantly persistent and just continuing. We just assume they're busy. I'll just check, bump it again, move it up to the top of their inbox. Most people check their messages from the top down. Do you guys know that? Right? You got to think of how you check your messages. You got six unread messages over from last, or 17 unread messages from last few days. Do you start with the oldest one first and move up? No, you start at the top one. And you maybe never get to the bottom one. And so we have a message that gets, they look at it like, oh, I should respond later. It gets buried. And then we curse them later. Like, they never responded to me. Forget those people. I'm moving on. Oh, they just forgot. Like, bump it to the top. But don't do it in like a, a weird, aggressive way. Like, yo, dirtbag, you never answered this thing. Just be like, hey, I'm sure you got busy. Did, did you see this one? Little finger emojis pointing up. All right. So we've got things we're going to do. Build value. Build connection. Next one could be give referrals for their business. Many of you guys ever find out what your what your clients, sphere of influence, what they do for work? Do you ever send business to them? Or even try to send business to them? It doesn't matter if it goes through. Just attempting to send someone business. Think about the goodwill that builds. It's the psychology of reciprocity, right? Number one, it really just feels good to try to help someone else. I truly believe that. I believe we should leave the world better than we than we than we found it. But I will say from a psychology standpoint, it comes from the book uh, The Psychology of Influence by Robert Cialdini. Um, he talks about psychology of reciprocity. You give someone something, they're going to want to give something back. Just how we're wired. Uh, I won't get too much dip in depth in that because I want to give you guys a few minutes to start conversations in a minute. 
Um, but then the other thing you could ask them, like, you know, what's going on with them? What's going on with their kids? What's going on with their family? You guys know Ford, family, occupation, recreation, dreams, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. Ford, things you could ask about. Um, again, I'm not giving you an exhaustive list on these conversations, but um, I, I will tell you, there's kind of like a waterfall of how I believe connection works. Do you guys ever see the movie Meet the Fockers with a, uh, you know, the, the, the Robert De Niro is the dad, and, and it's talking about the circle of trust, right? It's, that, that's the visual always. Uh, there we go. Got, got 100% people recognizing that reference. So I always get that image in my mind when I think about how we communicate. Like with my friends, like these days, I don't talk that often to some of my friends that I've known for years. We just text. But like when we really want to like have a deep conversation, then we get on the phone. We do a phone call. We really want to like connect. We'll go meet up in person. And if they live far away, I might actually FaceTime them. I do this a lot with my, they have kids and I have kids. We like get our kids together and we like FaceTime, right? Because it's the next best thing to be, or Zoom to being together and hanging out in person. But if you think about that circle of trust and that waterfall, my goal, if I'm trying to deepen a relationship, is to move my way in a in an appropriate way, not in a creepy stalker way, but in an appropriate way, move my way down that connection waterfall where we're texting a lot, we're DMing, we might go to have, like, have a phone call at some point or set a coffee date in person, right? Again, use this from whatever context it is, whether it's someone in your sphere, buyer, a buyer or seller, you might be moving it to an initial buyer consultation or a listing appointment, but you're moving or it's over Zoom and FaceTime versus just a phone call. Does this make sense, guys? Is this a helpful framework to kind of look at this? All right, cool. So so let me just see if I'm missing anything on my notes. Um, other than that, starting lots of conversations. Oh, that's, that's really where I wanted to go because I wanted to give you, if you blocked off 30 minutes, we got 10 minutes left, which is fantastic because I want you to right now get out your list. And if you don't have a list, I want you to pause this recording if you're listening to it, quickly write a list and come back to it and push play again and set a timer or just set a timer for 10 minutes and go see how many conversations you can start in 10 minutes. We do this inside our, our group here. So a lot of us are connected to, through our, our, our group at eXp and we did this experiment the other day. We get a 15 minute block to see how many conversations we could start in 15 minutes. And we on average started 20 conversations per person in a 15 minute period. And we had like 35 people on the Zoom, multiply 35 by 20, that was a ton of the conversations we started in a short period of time, right? If, you, if you're a manager, you run an office, you're here or something like that, like you, whatever you do, you, get a, you run a sales team, you get a group of people together with your sales team. Think about how powerful this is in a short little, they call it a conversation blitz. And it's so fun. So we're going to start doing this once a month inside our group. But I just want to give you guys this, this assignment for today. And you got 10 minutes already blocked off till the bottom of the hour. Go ahead and jump in, right? Push play. And if you want for bonus points, we didn't talk about video text messaging, but I love video text messages, right? Uh, Krista Mayshore, she's one of my business partners for, for, for EXP. Um, she always, she's a coach trainer. She always trains on video text and I, and I get this from her. But if you've never tried this one, if you just send out 10 video text messages a day and you could do 10 video texts in the next 10 minutes, pick someone from your past clients, from your sphere, some, and with no agenda. That's the key to starting the conversation is whether it's video text, normal text, phone call, you should have no agenda. You're just reaching out to open a dialogue. Just go shoot 10 conversations. You can even blame it on me. You can go pick 10 people and just say, hey, I was just on a, on a training with my, with my real estate office and, and the guy said, I should go start 10 conversations with my 10 favorite people in the next 10 minutes. And I just looked at my phone, your, your name popped out. And like, I know we don't know each other that well, but uh, you know, it made me smile. So I just want to say hi. Happy holidays. I got no agenda. I just wanted to reach out. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Merry Christmas. If you celebrate, happy holidays. Try doing that. You got 10 minutes. Thanks for listening this morning. Heather, good to see you. Diana, good to see you. Greg, have a great day, guys. Happy holidays. If you'd like more information or to get connected to the Agent Power Huddle, join our free Facebook group. This call was designed for the agents in our EXP organization, but open to any agent from any brokerage. If you're a guest and you're interested in learning more about EXP or our specific resources within the Agent Collective, reach out to the person who invited you to this call to get more info. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.